Scientists in Florida are on an urgent mission to try to save the coral reef, says warming ocean waters threaten the little that is left. Our international climate correspondent, Susan Ormiston, literally dives <laughs> into the largest coral reef restoration project in the world. We have lost since the 1980s almost 97% of our coral coverage, um, which is crazy fast. Biologists Celia Lito and Zach Craig are part of a rescue mission preparing the reefs for rebirth with new corals. It's a, a really dire and bad situation. Their weapons, hammers and brushes, and science. We wouldn't exist without coral reefs. If we allow it to degrade and go away, we're going to see uh, consequences throughout the planet. That is just a taste of what you will see tonight on The National, a feature report in its entirety. But The Voice and uh, the reporter you saw in those images are international climate correspondent Susan Ormiston, who's here to give us some time today. That's beautifully shot and put together. Really looking forward to seeing the full report. What is the urgency? Why tell this story right now, Susan? Well, you know, back in April, we were watching the sea surface temperature, and it spiked. Sort of surprising and alarming to some scientists because it is an indicator of climate change in general. Now, surface temperatures go up and down, but this, for this season, was higher than ever before. Just by a little, but again, an indicator. So scientists are thinking, okay, this is not good. We're seeing a general warming trend, but this is another indicator. Also, we know that we expect El Nino mm -hmm. weather pattern to emerge this summer and carry on into the year. And scientists know that in general, it is a warming influence over the earth, including the ocean. So predicting in parts, severe storms, drought, heat, and warming of the oceans. And the last time there was El Nino, we saw more coral bleaching um, of incidents of that. So they're looking at these indicators and watching what happens. And a lot of people are now predicting El Nino and saying, we've got to come up with mitigation efforts in the next 18 months to deal with it. So that's exactly what they're doing in the Florida Keys. You yeah. spent time with them. And I just talked about it as being the world's largest coral reef restoration project. Is that right? Yeah. So the Florida Keys are one of the most important uh, coral reefs in the world. And they have been decimated down, as Celia said, down 97% in coral cover in the last 40 years. Lots of reasons, disease, ocean temperatures for sure, and also acidification and human activity. But finally, there is a massive effort going into replanting these reefs. Half a million coral they're trying to put on these reefs over the next 20 years. So the size and scope and range of this project makes it the biggest in the world. And the encouraging thing is that a lot of scientists are collaborating now all over the world. Great Barrier Reef, all those iconic reefs, they're sharing information and the science has exploded, Heather. I mean, they can monitor this, these reefs on a daily basis. They can look at those baby coral trying to survive down there uh, with 3D images. They monitor their growth. They take pictures of, you know, one month, one year, three years. So all these things are coming together for a project such as this. That's fantastic. Is there any encouragement in this? I mean, there's so much of the world's effort is focused on curbing CO2 emissions. Is that having any effect positively on the oceans? Well, I think in general, we are going at great lengths to curb CO2 right. emissions, but it's not happening fast enough. So the funding agencies, you know, federal and regional and all the, um, you know, the, the marine science around this, they finally decided, look, we can't wait any longer. These reefs are going to die. They're not reproducing naturally in Florida anymore at all. So they said, we're going to fund this for 20 years to try to restore these reefs because we can't wait. It's going to take too long to bring those carbon emissions to a place which will actually affect the ocean. Even if we stop them today, the ocean would continue to absorb heat for the next 50 years. Important to watch tonight on The National. Thanks for coming You're in today to there. tell us about us and give us a little bit of a preview. Susan Ormiston, who is our international climate correspondent.